decide whether we go to trial, and you and I work together to decide what witnesses we want to call, what information we want to give the judge. We work as a team. Do you understand? Are you like a public defender? I wanted a real lawyer. <laughs> I, I am a real lawyer. I want to get to know you and your case. We have to work together. Are you okay with that? I think so. The rules of your locale will affect whether communications are confidential. As you explain your role, you also need to explain important rules like the attorney-client privilege. Well, because I'm your lawyer, I have to follow special rules. What you and I say to each other is private. I'm not allowed to tell anyone else unless you say it's okay. What do you think about that? You can't tell anyone what I say? Mm-mm. Lawyers aren't allowed to tell anyone what their clients tell them. It's called the attorney-client privilege. Does that make sense? I think so. Well, I want to make sure you understand. Can you explain it back to me? Well, whatever we say is between you and me. Mm -hmm. In addition to explaining the lawyer's role and the lawyer-client relationship, a lawyer must show that he will help the client both inside and outside the courtroom. The other thing I do as your lawyer is I will share information with you about the court and what happens there. I will explain information about your case, like uh, what you can expect to happen in your court hearings, how your mother is doing about your brother, and I need you to tell me things that you know. You think you can share your thoughts and feelings? Maybe. I know you miss your family a lot, Carrie, and I'm sure you're wondering about them, and, and we'll talk about how they're doing, and we'll also talk about how you're doing here in your new foster home and in school. I miss my mom. Well, I do have some information about your mom. Explaining roles and responsibilities is a way to continue to build your relationship with your child client. Explain all roles and relationships. Introduce all decision makers. Explain important rules like the attorney-client privilege and mandatory reporting. And know the laws of your jurisdiction. Communication tools. As you're building a relationship with a child and explaining roles and legal concepts, you need to make sure that you are using the most effective tools to communicate clearly with your client. Well, I think it's good lawyering in general to keep it straightforward. You know, sometimes lawyers think that to be professional, we have to use the bigger words and the more complicated, convoluted sentences. And I don't think that's good lawyering in general. You're going to be changing the way you're communicating based on the age of that client, based on the situation of that client, based on what that client's been through that day. Um, so when you're dealing with a young person, you're constantly modifying how you're communicating. I've told you that you have a lawyer on your side. That's me. Your brother will also have a lawyer because he was arrested for the same thing. Shorty was arrested too. Pay special attention to language in a child interview, both yours and the child's. Use words and phrases that are clear and age appropriate. And use the child's terms for people and things. You call Ricky Shorty? Uh-huh. Yes. Shorty was arrested, too. That's why he'll have a lawyer to help him, just like you have me. Make sense? Yeah, but Shorty didn't do anything, either. That's why you have a lawyer, and Shorty has a lawyer, too. I think it's important first to recognize that children are not simply small adults, that children go through developmental stages, and that those developmental stages affect their ability to understand what we say to them. I think when we represent um, kids, we've got to pay attention and use age-appropriate language um, in talking with them. And that does not mean talking to every 15, 16, and 17-year-old like they're a baby. It means listening, paying attention, and being flexible to use the language that they're capable of using and capable of understanding. You know how I told you that it's my job to tell the court your story? 
Yeah, like how the cop said, I hit Oscar in the fight and all. That's right. There'll also be another lawyer on the other side, the prosecutor. It's the prosecutor's job to tell another story. He'll tell the judge why he thinks you did this and how you should be punished. The prosecutor is a lawyer, but he doesn't work for you. He works against us on our case. Do you understand? Uh, he's another lawyer? Yes. Whose side is the prosecutor on? He's on my side. Oh, n no, never mind. He's not on my side, so he's trying to make me look guilty. That's right. Now, there will be other people in the courtroom, too, so I want you to know who they are. There's always By avoiding point. legal jargon and confirming the child's understanding of his explanations, this lawyer is ensuring that he is communicating in a way that his client can understand. I always think of communication as being um, the burden of the lawyers, not the child. So you have to find a way to communicate and use the language that that child will understand. It is difficult for anyone to admit that they don't understand something to a stranger. That is no different for a teen or child. It is critical that you take the lead in creating a safe environment for the child to ask questions. Do you understand what I mean by a right to remain silent? I think so. And tell me in your words what a right to remain silent means. It means I don't have to talk if I don't want to, and that I can have my lawyer tell me whether or not I should talk. What about a police officer? Do you have to talk to him? Well, I can't be rude, so I just tell them my name and address and nothing else if I don't want to. That's right. If you have any questions about that or anything else about your case, will you please ask me? Yes. Great. I'll talk ask. To just be honest and say, you know, did you understand? And giving them a safe space in which to say, I didn't understand. Um, I might say to them, you know, people tell me I talk like a lawyer, and it's okay for you to tell me that too. <laughs> if you don't understand what I'm saying, just tell me. Children need to come to sharing information in their own time. Don't be afraid of silence. If a child needs some time before talking, follow the child's lead. And I'm glad that you like muffins. It gives me a chance to treat myself, too. The last time I was here, you said you were going to move in with your grandmother. Yep. That sounds like a plan. What happened? I don't want to talk about it. What would you like to talk about? I don't want to talk anymore. I'm done talking. Okay. Children need to know that you will be comfortable giving them the opportunity to share information when they are ready. Patience will go a long way in building trust. I made. Oh, oh my. Why don't I clean this up? And then we can start talking again. Okay. It is your responsibility as the lawyer to help the child understand what is happening during their case. Use developmentally appropriate words and sentences. Avoid legal jargon. Use words your client would use for people and things. And don't be afraid to allow for silence during your interview. Let the child take the lead on when they are ready to share information. Successful interview techniques. By the time a lawyer appears in court, the lawyer needs to have gathered enough information to be able to try the case. To gather information effectively and clearly, you must plan the interview in advance and consider the strategies that best fit the child client, the case, and the relationship between the child and the attorney. There's always a conflict between the attorney having a list of things they want to find out and the child's interest in really just finishing this conversation because it's riddled with so much anxiety for them. There are some simple techniques that a lawyer can use when interviewing a child client 
The first technique is called child-centered interviewing. You have to be empathetic, you have to be focused on the client, and you have to demonstrate that. We really have to start where the client is. We have to begin the conversation where they are. When practicing child-centered interviewing, start with basic relationship building questions to encourage your child client to open up and share his concerns. Use active listening techniques. Acknowledge your client's feelings and concerns through supportive words or gestures. You can then encourage more productive communication by addressing your client's concerns before continuing with the interview. Well, listen, I want to talk to you about the meeting we're going to have about your special classes. What do you think about your new school? I don't like it. It's too hard. Well, what makes it hard? I don't know. The other kids seem to be further ahead than me. They do? Yeah, that's how it feels. Well, that must be hard for you. How long have you been at this school? Since I moved in with my new foster parents. And how's that going? OK, but I really miss my brother. I want to be with him. I don't know how he got to be at grandma's, and they put me here. I mean, I like my foster parents, but I want to be with my family. And I can tell your family's important to you. Maybe we can make arrangements for a visit and phone calls with your brother and grandma. But I don't know her number. Well, I can get that for you and make the arrangements, okay? Okay. Now let's talk about what you want to have happen at that meeting, okay? Okay. Well, not all children can articulate their needs clearly. You need to listen carefully, not only to what a child is saying, but to how the child is saying it, for clues to what the child's concerns really are. When did it all start? It was like a month ago. Me and my brother were staying with our foster mom, Deirdre. And there was another kid there named Oscar, and he always got to go home. And he had just come from an overnighter with his mother. And he didn't go to school that day because he said he didn't feel good. Sounds like you're upset that Oscar always gets to go home and, and you don't. How about if I talk to your social worker about a visit with your mom, OK? This lawyer recognized his client's concern about getting time with her mother. A child-centered interviewer will always be an active listener. He will identify concerns and address them first in order to allow the child to then focus on the subject of the interview. You can use an interviewing method called the funnel technique to encourage the child to give their account of what happened and to develop facts important to the case. Asking open-ended questions, letting the kid run with it, and then following up with narrow questions. And I find it to be extremely effective. In the first stage of the funnel technique, the lawyer allows the child to tell the story uninterrupted. In the second stage, the lawyer asks open-ended questions to further develop facts. In the third stage, the lawyer confirms facts through a series of narrow, close-ended questions. Here is an example of the first stage, where the lawyer allows his client to speak uninterrupted. So, why don't you tell me what happened when Oscar got hit? There was one particular game we all wanted to play, which was called WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. And you throw the person in a body slam by throwing them onto the floor. And then, like, I know where my brother I let them tell me the story at least once, if not more times, all the way through without my asking any questions. It shows the child that you're going to let them speak, that you're not going to cut them off, that you don't discredit their story because they're a child. But it also begins to reveal to you their view, where they're sitting in this whole narrative, in this whole story, their perspective on it, what's important to them. Stage two of the funnel technique is your chance to track back through the story using open-ended questions starting with who, what, where, when, why, and how to clarify the story and continue to develop facts. Okay. So let's go over that again slowly so I can understand each part. When did it all start? It was like... A month ago, we, me and my brother were staying with our 